What's up, guys? Fight of the night, no brainer. Figueredo versus Moreno, the main event. Um, they robbed the women and took the 50,000. And then uh, Fiziev and uh, Holland got performance of the night. They all won $50,000. And uh, Davison was, uh, was uh, transported to the hospital, so he won't be here. John? When's the, uh, when's the rematch? 2021. I don't know. I mean, we got to give these guys some time off, but you absolutely positively do that rematch. That's another fun fight for us all to look forward to in, in 2021. Yeah, no question about it. Um, obviously, it was a great fight. I mean, we could go on and on about it. I did want to ask you about the scoring, and I'm not sure if you've seen the cards yet, but the reason it was a draw was because one judge gave Moreno the fifth round, which I don't think many people did. If, if Figueredo gets it, that ends up being a Figueredo win. So what did you think about the scoring overall, and does that change it? Interesting. I didn't know that. Um, but we were in the back. I, I went back halfway through the fight, and we were sitting back there saying this, this could definitely end up being a draw with the, uh, when they took the point. But I didn't know that somebody gave him the last round. So I say, man, you, you never know with these judges. You never know. Uh, what did you think about the point deduction? Obviously, that's being debated right now. It obviously factored into the results of the fight. What did you think about it? What the ref said was it was the third foul. So normally in a case like that, you know, a guy gets a foul, he'd be warned, you know. But that was the third foul, and I think the ref felt he had to get control of the fight and, 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 and make Figueredo stop, you know, stop poking him in the eyes. Stop kicking him in the nuts. So it, it worked. Um, I, I didn't get to hear it, but I was looking at online reports. It seems like Devison said that he was in the hospital until 2 a.m. this morning. I'm assuming you were aware of that. What, 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 what can you tell us about that, especially knowing that we won't get to ask him about it? Yeah. Um, yeah, he did. He, you know, he, had some, uh, he didn't feel good in the middle of the night last night, so he went to the hospital. What's going through your mind when your main event's in the hospital the night before? I mean, is this 2020? Yeah, after this year, man. I just, just good luck. Good luck, you know, getting me to, to flinch at anything. But, uh, yeah, you know, th these things happen sometimes, and especially this year. Yeah. So, but he went in, he got taken care of. And, I was going to say, were, know, we in, were we in danger of losing it? I mean, was it that close to the, with the – Anytime a guy goes to the hospital, you're in danger. Obviously, we, we gave him, you know, do you want to fight or do you not want to fight? It's up to you. He was obviously cleared medically to fight, but he had the option to, to fight or not fight, and he wanted to fight. Cool. Got to ask you about Charles Oliveira's performance in the co-main event as well. I mean, obviously the guy's grown up in front of our eyes here in front of the UFC. What did you think about his performance this evening? Yeah, he looked incredible, man. And, and uh, you know, there were some debates going into that fight. I, I, I thought we were going to see the old Tony, you know. Uh, I thought that the last fight, uh, he was affected by weight cutting, and uh, we, we were going to see, you know, I mean, 10 out of 10 people tapped at that arm bar. The fact that he even made it through the arm bars is unbelievable. And just a testament to how tough and durable and crazy Tony Ferguson is. Yeah. Clearly, you got another contender at lightweight. I mean, he's, he wants, a, he wants a, a title fight potentially next. But I want to ask you, we saw the 257 lineup on the broadcast tonight. Um, there have been rumblings of maybe Gaethje and Chandler on that same card. Uh, we didn't see it tonight. Obviously, that would impact the lightweight division as well. Can you give us any update on that? Is that fight happening or what's going on with it? Yeah. Uh, listen, um, this is the last pay-per-view of the year. I'm going on vacation tomorrow. I'm, I'm, when I get home, we'll get all this stuff squared away and get everything done. Do you think that Oliveira now, though, is part of that conversation? Any title fight discussions that you have? I mean, he's in there? The rankings are coming out on Tuesday, so we'll, we'll see where he ends up in the rankings. And without a doubt, no matter what, I mean, the guy's one of the best in the world right now in the nastiest division in the sport. So, yeah. A couple other quick ones for me. Kevin Holland, man, we've never seen anything like that. That was absolutely amazing. Can you just talk about Kevin Holland's win and where do you see that guy going? I mean, this has been a heck of a year for him. Yeah, fought five times this year. Um, destroyed Jacare from his back and was, was handling his own on the ground with him. And, and, you know, very, very impressive. I was blown away with him tonight. And, and, and I'm really happy for him. I like the kid a lot. He's a really good kid. He's got a great attitude. And you know what? He made a shitload of money this year. He made a lot of money. And... Uh, 
couldn't happen to a better guy. Nice. Last thing for me, obviously, you know, everybody's talking about the roster moves, right? The, the things that you got to do before the end of the year. I'm curious, names like Jacare, names like Junior Dos Santos, you know, guys that are kind of, you know, established former champions but are on losing streaks. Would you look at those two guys as names that are potentially on the chopping block? I mean, that's that, that, I mean that's every weekend. I mean, we'll, we'll be talking about this next weekend too, after the fights. It's just it's part of the sport. And yeah, I mean, I I think over the next uh, you know between last year and, and and next year, you're gonna see a lot of the, the the old big names, you know, moving on and retiring. So Dana. Not talking about his contract status, but that's four losses in a row for Junior and four by being knocked out. Do you think maybe it's time he starts looking at his future in fighting in general? I do. Yep. With uh, Fiziev earlier today, got us a beat Moikana. He looks very exciting, a great addition to the roster, but um, um, great to see where he goes in the roster. Do you think that was a fair stoppage? There's some talk that maybe Moikano is still in the fight and could. So when we're shooting a fight, okay? And this has happened to us before. It drives me friggin' nuts. So he's on top of him. Hits him with that beautiful three-punch combination. Gets on top of him and the ref stops the fight, right? As soon as the ref stops the fight, he starts arguing with him, right? So sometimes what our guys will do, they pan away and they go to the guy who won. He's celebrating and whatever. And you don't see him try to stand up and and fall back down mcconnell was done he could not get up he couldn't walk and he was stumbling all over the place trying to stand up and the production stayed on it so the fans see that so nobody's at home going that was a bullshit stoppage that that was stopped too soon there's no way that fight was stopped too soon that was a beautiful stoppage by the ref and an unbelievable combination uh that he threw to win the fight you, you mentioned that you thought you were going to see the old Tony Ferguson. Um, you know, it's two losses in a row. It's not the most. But is it possible that the old Tony Ferguson is no longer and that Tony's now on a decline? I, yeah, of course that's possible. Um, but Tony, Tony needs to go home and spend the holidays with his family, take some time off and think about what he wants to do next year. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what's next for him. But, yes, that's... Every time you fight, every, you know, in this business, that's always possible. And last thing for me, if you could put it into a word or into a feeling, how relieved are you that this year is over? Yeah, it's funny because every time we've been talking through this year, I've been telling you, you know, I can't wait for this year to be over. I can't wait for this year to be over. But, you know, I, I don't know what I expected for 2021, but it doesn't look like it's going to be any different. It's going to be a lot of the same shit next year um but this year was was a great year for us man we had we had a great year great fights business has never been better um you know i i did an interview the other day with dan wetzel and walked through the business with him and basically our business is up we broke records this year in almost every category except live gate um so 2020 was a horrible year in many ways, you know, for all of us personally and professionally, but it was a great year for the UFC. Just a follow-up on that. Knowing that 2021 is probably going to be full of shit as well, is it still a relief and a sense of pride that you can start the year off with a pay-per-view with Conor McGregor, which will essentially kick-start the year just like this year? It's like, what, what better way could you start the year? Yeah, no, it's, uh, and... and you look at the fights that we have lined up, you look at the, the roster of young up-and-coming talent that we have. But first fight in Jacksonville, Florida, when no other sports were going, we had Ferguson versus Gaethje. You, you know, it's just, um, it's, been, it's, it's, it's been a good run, and we've had nothing but great fights th th this whole year. Um, yeah, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Congratulations on a great year. Thanks. I appreciate it. Dana, uh, do you think that the main event should be considered in the fight of the year? When you when you look, you had a number of great fights. Uh, you know, the women's fight, uh, Joanna. Um, yeah, Joanna and Whaley was really good, too. So right. I mean, it, it, had, it, it, uh, it was just so long ago. People need to remember how damn good that and fight Emmett was. Emmett and Burgos was also a great one, and you had a number. But you, do you we, think this should be in that consideration? When you walk into our front doors at the UFC, we have these huge TV screens there, and the Ronda Rousey boardroom is is right above it 
I was in a meeting uh, about two months ago, and they were airing the, the Whaley uh, Ioana fight. I couldn't fucking pay attention to anything in this meeting. I just kept watching the fight, and I forgot how incredible that fight was. Um, and what they both looked like after that fight, because they had literally beat the shit out of each other. Um, but yeah, this fight and, and that fight are, yeah. And I wonder, you know, uh, Figueredo's such a strong guy and everything, and the, you know, the, I, I texted you during the fight about how Moreno was, you know, and I wonder if you could just comment on the, the heart that he showed. I mean, it seems like physically he's outgunned in that fight, and he's getting hit by some shots that would knock over a horse, and he's coming back and, and, and putting it on, uh, on Figueredo. To the body, to the head. Um, you know, the, the shots he was taking. It's funny because leading up this week, he was telling everybody that his hero is Julio Cesar Chavez, and that's who he wants to, you know, when people remember him and his career, and, you know, he wants to be remembered like a Julio Cesar Chavez. Well, when you look at typical Mexican fighters, he is the, the prototype. I mean, he is exactly what you think of when you think of, of, of real Mexican fighters he he uh yeah he, he looked damn good tonight and i wonder if you when you think of what you saw tonight from these two guys and what you saw from them three weeks ago isn't it kind of amazing that how close we were to losing the division and we wouldn't even had those fights you know but you had these great performances in the last couple weeks that out of a division that was on the verge of being gone yeah and you know what we were talking about that tonight too i got to give it to mick Mick went in and, and, and restructured and rebuilt that division, and uh, it, it's one of the most exciting divisions in the UFC now. And tonight we put on a potential fight of the year and potential greatest fight ever in the division's history. So congrats to Mick. Why was it in such bad shape? Was it just because people didn't care about it before? Like, I mean, because you had great, you know, obviously Demetrius was a great fighter and you had other great fighters in the division. Why do you think it was in such bad shape before and what specifically changed it to make it better now? Well, we all know nobody cared about it. I mean, I, I sat up here and, you know, and at, at press conferences before the fight telling everybody why you needed to watch that division and why there were so many great fights, but People just didn't give a shit. You can't make people care. They got to care or they don't. Um, Mick had some ideas. He wanted to go in and make some tweaks in the division. He did it. And uh, here we are today. You share any of the tweaks? Yeah. I, I, think, I think you can figure it out if you look at it. I mean, look at the roster. It's all exciting, exciting guys. Um, guys that are fun to talk to. You know, you got, you got a guy who's a real Mexican from Mexico and fights like a real Mexican from Mexico. And, um, you know, the list goes on and on. And my last question, um, you know, there had to be at least some trepidation when you're coming back three weeks, right? You know, you, you wonder if, if they're going to be ready to come back at all. Um, and then you heard last night the news, you know. So how were you that today going in? How confident were you that they were going to be able to kind of put together the fight that we knew it would have been had they – had a normal training camp. That, no, you're, you're dead on. You're dead on. Um, yeah, I didn't know. You don't know. And then, and then you start wondering, well, we're going to find out when this thing gets into the fourth and fifth round and things like that. But talking about seriously, we throw the, the word around a lot, but these two are seriously fucking savages. Both of these guys are absolute savages. Incredible performance. Uh, what did you make of the uh, stoppage in the Junior Dos Santos Cyril Gain fight? Uh, Junior seemed to take issue with it, saying it was behind the head. Yeah, I don't know. You guys tell me what you think, but what I saw was Junior had gotten hurt, he got rocked, and he was almost walking away and turning his back to him, and uh, Cyril was throwing shots at him and then threw an elbow. I mean, they were squared up. You turned your back, and he caught you on the back of the head. Now, what did you make of uh, Chase Hooper's performance? I mean, the first round, Joe Rogan was saying, like, maybe he needs fights outside of the UFC <laughs> to build himself up. And then two rounds later, he's pulling off a come-from-behind submission win. So yeah. uh, what would you make of his win? Listen, that, that kid has an incredible ground game. He, he needs to tighten up the rest of the game. You, you, you can't come here and continue to take that kind of punishment. Um, and have any longevity 
in, in your career. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see how he progresses. I mean, listen, the kid's winning. Um, but you can't get your ass destroyed for three rounds and pull off a, a slick submission at the end of the third round for, for too long. It's going to catch up with you. Interesting stat is uh, no new no champions dethroned in all of 2020. All the new champions were from vacant title fights. So outside of everything happening in the world, in terms of just the competition, it's been a pretty dominant year for these champions, right? I didn't even realize that. Interesting. Yeah, it's been a fun year of fights, considering you know everything being shut down and you know all the stuff that we went through this year it's 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 been a fun year of fights it's been some good stuff and there's been a lot of young talent that has emerged this year dana over here since this is the last time we'll talk to you for the year i want to know if they told you dana at the beginning of the year you're not going to be doing any traveling but you're going to get this thing called fight island in abu dhabi what would you have said uh listen if you'd have told me that that Las Vegas was going to shut down and casinos wouldn't be open and you know I, I, I would never believe this in a million years um, so to think about it you know anything else with the business I, I just I couldn't imagine a day where companies were shut down where sports wouldn't happen Disneyland wouldn't be open you know shit like that wouldn't believe it the first fight, when everything started going on, everyone was kind of holding on, like, hey, just anything can happen, but Tony versus Habib in Brooklyn, somehow it gets salvaged. We know in the end it just didn't seem to be meant to be. You've been president a long time. Big fights have fallen apart. Is there any particular extra sting, I guess, that the Tony Habib fight that everyone wanted just didn't seem to happen? No, no, it, 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 it doesn't. Uh it just didn't. I mean, it wasn't from lack of trying. I mean, we, we, we put that fight together five times. It just, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't meant to be. I don't think about it at all. I'm assuming this might be a, you know, when you get back from vacation. We know that you've talked about the heavyweights in March. We know Connor's in January. Is there any targeted champion who you want to headline the February pay-per-view? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not even thinking about that right now. I'm not thinking about anything. I, tonight was our last pay-per-view of the year, and I just, I just wanted to get through this. And, uh, you know, put 2020 in the, in the rearview mirror. And then we'll – I mean, you guys know. You can tell how next year is uh, shaping up. We've got awesome fights next year. So I don't know how the rest of the world is going to be, and, and, and I've already – sort of set my mind I'm in a place where I don't give a shit what goes on with the rest of the world I don't care this is the only world that I have to focus on and think about and uh, take care of my people my family and whatever else goes on fuck it I'm not even gonna f whatever man I'm just focused on what's going on here so um yeah, that's my attitude going into 2021. Happy holidays, Dana. Thanks, buddy. You too. Hey, Dana. Hey, what's Good up, to see buddy? You. you too. Take a look at a guy like Brandon Marino. Summer of 2019, he gets cut. He stays ready. He climbs his way in. He loses the majority draw here for the title fight. What kind of message does it send guys that don't get contracts at the contender series or get cut about staying ready, being active, and you never know when your shot's going to come? Yeah, I mean, you've seen a lot of it with, with the Contender Series. Guys that didn't win or didn't make it that night, but I said, you know what, they can come back. And they have them. They've done well. Um, some guys come back twice. Um, never give up, man. You got, you got to keep fighting, especially if this is what you want to do. This is a tough business. And one more question. Is it safe to say that no decisions will be made for the lightweight strap until you meet face-to-face -face with Habib in person? Yeah, I'm meeting with him next month. It, it actually all lines up perfectly. Connor's going to fight that same week with Poirier. We're talking about Chandler fighting. You know, this fight happened. 
tonight, and then I meet with Habib next month, and uh, we figure out what's going on. Dana, um, how do you have the, the fight between Moreno and Figueredo by the third round before the deduction? How did I have it? Yeah. Yeah. Like um, I mean, I, I had Figueredo winning the fight. The point, the point deduction, the whole fight turned. You know, Moreno started coming on stronger. Um, he probably won that round um, without the point deduction. And, and that was when the whole fight really started to turn. For the rematch, it depends on the health of uh, both fighters, right? Uh, but in the case of Moreno, is not ready for that. Are you considering maybe Cody Garbrandt again or uh, the, comeback, the comeback of uh, TJ Dillashaw? No, these guys just fought twice in three weeks. Yeah. They got nothing but time. They can take as much time as they need. Okay, and what do you think about uh, Mackenzie Dern's performance? She's been doing great, a lot of evolution. Uh, she showed a great stand-up. Uh, she did a great, a great job. And toughness, too, tonight. You know, with a broken nose, keeps coming forward. Actually fights harder in the third round with a broken nose. Um, yeah, you can tell that she's in a completely different zone and place. Getting than, for real. Huh? Yeah. Getting for real. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that was a great fight. Great and, fight. And do you think uh, we are uh, seeing the last fights of uh, Junior Dos Santos? Possibly. And uh, what about Tony? Tony Ferguson. I mean, he was tough as, as nails as always, but yeah. today, I, I, don't I don't know. know. I mean, Tony's a guy that's got to go take some time, figure out what he wants to do, what's his game plan for 2021. I, you know, I think Tony's still you know, a couple fights away from making any crazy decisions like that. Thank you. Thank you. Is that good? Yeah. Merry Christmas, you guys. Have a great holiday, and uh, I'll see you next year.